Thanks for staying with us. Uh, and bad governance. Federal go government places protest sponsors on watch lists is what we are looking at right now. The government, through the Nigerian Immigration Services, NIS, has placed the sponsors of the nationwide Ed Bad Governance protest on its watch list. This was disclosed by Comptroller General Kemi Nando Nandab on Tuesday, August 6, at Defense Headquarters, Abuja. Nandab stated that these individuals who are in the diaspora would be arrested upon their arrival in Nigeria. Uh, we have joining us Mr. Bola Bolaole, a veteran journalist and public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program. It's my pleasure to be here. Good morning. Mm. Okay, you've heard me. Um, these people are being placed on the watch list. Let me just get your general take on, um, on this. Uh, thank you very much. It should be expected that the government will take action against uh, those it terms uh, sponsors of uh, the protest that is going on uh, in the country. We should expect it. But the question we have to ask is, what is their offense? You see, by the time you are placing somebody on the watch list, you must state the offense of that person or the offenses that that person has committed. Is it an offense to protest? I don't think it is, because government itself has recognized the rights of the people to protest. And as I have said in some other forum, protest is a feedback mechanism. When people protest, they are trying to tell the government that this is how we feel about your actions, about your policies, about your programs. And it's supposed to be an input that government is supposed to take positively and then uh, reflect into its future actions and policies. So if there is no feedback mechanism in a system, it's, it doesn't allow the government to know how the people feel. It doesn't allow the government to serve the people better. It does also allow the government, the people to participate. And we are in a democracy. It is called participatory democracy. In other words, people must participate in that democracy. How do they participate? They cannot, they cannot all go to the presidency and sit on the president's seat. They cannot all be made ministers. They cannot all be made the senators or House of Rep members. They cannot all become governors or local government chairmen. How they participate is to make their feelings known to the government. And one of the ways that civilized societies make their feelings known is through protest, peaceful protest. And I am happy that government itself has actually agreed that the people have a right to protest, that the protest should be made uh, civil, the protest should be made peaceful, and they have even taken steps to ensure that the, the, uh, the police and the other agencies of government, security agencies of government that they monitor the protest in such a way they give protection to the, to the protesters to make sure that their ranks are not infiltrated. So in as much as government has gone to this level to accept that protests are legitimate in a democracy, in as much as it has gone to the level of making efforts to protect the, the, the protesters from being infiltrated, then we need to now ask what is the offense that makes you to put some watch list? As somebody who has been in this business for quite some time, I do understand, like we say in our journalism balance, that there is no smoke without fire. Hmm. Before government can decide that it wants to put some people on the watch list, there must have been a reason for it. Normally, people tend to believe that government acts without the government acts without uh, reasons. No, government does not act without reasons. Just like we as individuals don't act without reasons. There must be a, a, a reason behind the government's action. So what we, we should try to find out from them, the explanation we should find out from them, is what is the reason? Why are you putting these people on the watch list? Is it because they are protesting or they are sponsoring protests? Or is there something to it that meets the eyes? Is there something you know? Government normally have a lot of information at their fingertips. They have more information than ordinary citizens. So rather than condemn what the CG of immigration has done or has said, we should ask for more explanations. We should ask her to release more information. Why do you think that these people should be put on the watch list? 
Is it because of one offense or the other? They should be able to tell us. Before you put somebody on the watch list, let the person know the reason why you are putting him on the watch list. Let the citizens know the reason why you are putting him on the watch list so that it does not look as if you are victimizing this person. So that it does not look as if this is a vendetta. So that it does not look as if you are indirectly trying to muscle and muffle the voice of dissent. So that it does not look as if you are in one breath saying that you agree to protest, in another breath you are trying to victimize and, uh, and uh, muscle the people who are protesting. So all we need to do is ask for explanations. What is, what is the reason? Why are you doing this? Uh, well, I don't know if uh, even after the reason, um, a lot of Nigerians will believe because a lot of times uh, this smoke without fire, uh, they have proven it wrong because it could just be that they are blowing um, chalk dust on you and you're thinking that it's smoke because of a lot of things that have happened and people tend to disbelieve whatever the government is saying. Okay, now, these people are... Bit, let's, let's even leave that. We might revisit that. But what do you describe... How do you describe the modus operandi of, uh, of our security agencies? They have come now to say uh, some people are placed on the watch list. As soon as they get, get into Nigeria, they are going to arrest them. It's as if telling them, stay away from Nigeria or we are going to arrest you. Why not just keep quiet and let those people come? Arrest them, prosecute them, and let Nigerians see that you are working. These people... According to the security agencies, they, they, had, or they, they had information that people are sponsoring this protest long before the protest, and the security agencies came out to say that. But they did nothing about it until the protest came, and it turned violent, according to the reports that we are having and all that. And now they're coming out to say, you know what, these people who we know are sponsoring this, we are waiting to arrest them. Who does that? My brother... There is nobody who does anything without being sponsored. You can't be on this te television, you can't have this television house if somebody did not sponsor you. Somebody put down the money for you to buy the equipment, for you to pay salaries and things like that before you can have this business organization running. Those of them who are in government, somebody sponsored them. They, brought, they, they put money together before they could contest the elections before they could win, whether, whether, whether you are the president or you are the national assembly member or you are governor, somebody, some people sponsored you. Money was spent before you got to your positions. The people who are now saying, even the CG, respectfully, I respect her, is going to do a good job. Uh, she was sponsored into that position. She was appointed into that position. So people who are doing protests too, they will be some people will sponsor them. Some people will sponsor them with ideas. Some people will sponsor them with money. There is no way you can do a protest without sponsors. When people stage military coups, they are also sponsored. People will provide the money. They will provide the logistics. So to say that some people are sponsoring protests is a non-issue because they have to be sponsored. Some people have to provide the logistics. Some people have to put heads together, do meetings, I plan this, this is how we're going to do it. Some people have to progress, pro, 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 prepare their, their plan of action. So sponsorship is not a crime. It is, it is given. So they cannot say because some people are sponsoring the protest, therefore, that is the reason. That cannot be a tenable reason. My, my, my question is not even whether they were sponsors or not. My, I'm not even concerned whether they are sponsors or not. They could be sponsors. They could. That's not the thing. But I'm worried about how our security agencies carry on with their investigations, with their findings and all that. Don't they put the, co the, the cat before the horse all the time? Now they have said there were people who sponsored it. If Nigeria had gone into war because of this sponsorship, it could have been because of these people. But they have already now announced that they are going to arrest them before they even set foot in Nigeria, which means they will stay away from Nigeria. And if they are still sponsoring, they will continue to sponsor whatever they want to do. And they keep saying things like this. Sometimes they make pronouncements, we have had credible information that this is going to happen and all that, and they still do nothing about it. In other climes, I think... Or I feel no, no. that people do yeah, their no. investigation and carry out what they're supposed to do, even without us having to know. Why do they always have to come to the press and tell us what they are about to do uh, before they even do it? 
Yeah, don't say that they didn't do anything, uh, that they had information, they didn't do anything, because you cannot be too sure. Uh, they must have done something. It may not be what we expect them to do. We may not know for now what they did. So they couldn't have had those information without processing the information. They may have processed the information. They may not have processed it in the right manner, in the right way. And then some of the things they do, it is because they lack a understanding of a media relations. They had, they had, they lack the understanding of public speaking. There is a difference between public speaking and when you are in your official uh, kingdom and you back out others and you do things in the military fashion. Now, for, for take for example what you have, we have, we, we, you have just said, and they say when they come, we, they will be arrested. What the difference there is, if she had said, when they come, they will be invited. They will be invited for questioning. Why use the word arrest? Why not say invited? If our people in high places have the have a journalism nuances, if they have the nuances of public speak, they will pick their words carefully. They will not use words that will aggravate issues and situations. They will use words that it will be easy for people to see them as civil. For people for it will be easy for people to see them as a, as a, uh, uh, to see them as friends. Now we say that these people with the, the military they want us to see police. They want to say police is your friend. But the the statements that you you do you, you make, the actions they are to take, in fact, more even than the actual the statements portray you otherwise. So it is, the, it is the way that statement is couched that is the problem now, not the intention or the action behind it. If you tell me that you will arrest me when I come into my country, like you said, I will stay away. If you tell me that the reason why you are going to arrest me is because I'm sponsoring, you already, you already give me the impression that to sponsor a protest, to sponsor people who will hear their views for government to know has become a crime. And I will stay away. But if you tell me that, oh, when you come, we will invite you for questioning, we will interrogate you. You will tell us the reason why you did what you did. We will tell you what we think you, do, you, 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 you have done. And then you have the opportunity to uh, explain yourself. Arrest means that your freedom is already abrogated. Arrest means that you are already denied your, your, your freedoms. So who wants to be denied this freedom? Arrest means that you will be, you will be hauled, uh, put in detention, and you will not be able to see your family. You will lose your freedoms. You will lose your liberties. You will lose your privileges. So that word arrest, I think they should withdraw it. They should mm -hmm. simply say that these people that we suspect are doing this, when they come to the country, we will invite them for questioning. We will put before them the evidence, the facts that we have, and they will have the opportunity to explain themselves. And of course, we are in a civil rule uh, regime. So they will have the opportunity of, uh, of defending themselves, or having their day in court, even if you have anything against them. Mm. You are not the law court. You are not the one that will determine that they have committed an offense. It is a properly constituted court, a court of competent jurisdiction. They yeah. will say, yes, this is an offense, and this is the penalty for it. It is not in the place of the police. It's not in the place of the customs or immigration. It's not even in the place of the presidency to begin to apportion penalties uh, or, or people. That is the place of the law courts. I think we can never say enough uh, when we talk about the, the need for people in public offices to uh, employ the services of those who know. Uh, public relations is a very dicey uh, uh, occupation. Uh, talking to the people is a very, very sensitive thing. And politicians talk a lot, and they talk some of the things that they shouldn't ordinarily say. And like you said, sometimes the intention could be good, but coining the words that would be right for the people uh, is always a problem. 
One of my lecturers used to say, and I always quote it on this program, that meanings are in people, not in words. So if you say it in the wrong way, it might, it might bring a wrong um, idea in the minds of people who ordinarily should support what you are saying. But let, let's just, before we wrap up, uh, let's look at generally your, your, your take on the response of the security agencies towards the process before and after or before and during the yeah. protest, yes. Yes, I see a lot of positives in this protest. Number one, I see the positive aspect of Nigerians staring now. People used to say, oh, Nigerians are docile, they cannot complain, they cannot protest. People are protesting everywhere, Nigerians will not. Nigerians, when you push them to the wall, rather than fight back, they will break through the walls to escape. Now we have seen that Nigerians can actually stand up and protest. That is a positive thing. Government now is aware that if we do things that the people do not like, they can come up, they can protest. That is a positive thing. Now again, we are also saying that government has come to say that where the people have the right to protest, unlike before, when they will say a, a riot act, they will read the riot act and say nobody, anybody who is seen on the street will be gone down, so, so and so and so and so. But now government has come to accept, to acknowledge the right of the people to protest. That is another positive. Another positive is that government was even begging the protesters, please don't protest, please don't protest, please don't protest, let us stop, let us stop. It was not like that in the past. Either the government would just ignore you or the government would bullshit you or the government would say anything. But now, with this parliament, we, we, we saw them begging, we saw governors begging, we saw assembly members begging, we saw ministers begging, we saw everybody begging them. That is another positive. And then we also see the positive of even the police inviting the protesters to say, let us negotiate. And they were talking. They had, uh, they had meetings, or, they had two meetings, and they were talking, and they were trying to plan the protest. That's another positive uh, on, 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 on that part. So I see a lot of positives in this, uh, in this protest that we have seen. The protesters have said that the protest will be, will be, will be peaceful, but unfortunately, like we always know, they have, there are a lot of areas of the country where there are Pent up grievances. We have people who had political disagreements. We have people who were just looking for an opportunity to unleash themselves. Not because of this protest, not because they have anything to do with the protest, not because they even understand what the protest is all about. Like a governor told us, he said, many of the people who came, many of the youth were 13, 14 years old. People did not even understand what the protest was all about. If you ask them, they will tell you they don't even know what is happening. They just came out. Some, some of them came out because they don't like the governor, or because the governor was not the one they voted for, or because of one project or the other. They don't like this EMEA. I like that EMEA. That was the reason why people came out and they were protesting. So those were also those are the negatives of this, of, of, of this protest. That protests here are hijacked. We have not yet got to the level where we can ensure that protests are peaceful, that they are not hijacked, and that the ideals of the, of, of the, of the protest are actually carried out. Before one or two days, you find out that a lot of uh, extraneous factors crowd in and uh, these kind of things happen. And it makes planning very difficult. It makes planning very difficult for the protesters themselves because what they planned will be disrupted. It makes planning very difficult for the government, for the, for the security agencies, because what they planned for will also, be, will also be disrupted. I think that is the stage that we are in now in this country. If the protests had gone as planned, if the plans of the security agencies to give them protection had gone as planned, we would not have seen the violence that we have seen. We would not have seen the loss of life, the destruction of properties that we have seen. And it shows us that we have a lot of deep-seated problems that we have been sweeping under the carpets for decades. And these problems are the ones that are rearing their ugly heads now. The dead bodies that we have been burying over and over again, their legs are now popping up, and that's the problems we are having. So it's going to still take some time before we can get to that level where we can have peaceful protest, where the people can uh, ventilate their grievances and the government can listen. But we are on the right track. With this government saying that we're ready to dialogue, with this government saying, uh, recognizing the right to protest, we did police themselves who will be more civil now. I watched a lot of the, 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 the protests on television. I went to some of the sites, and I saw that the police were more civil now. Unlike in the past, we would have been talking about dead bodies in, in their hundreds. 
So we have seen that they are more stable. So we are on the right path. We only need to continue in this right direction. I believe that a day is coming when it will be possible for citizens to protest, to go about their lawful uh, protests without anybody harassing them. I call the protests that I said, instead of calling them protests, I call it feedback, feedback mechanism. What the people are doing, they are feeding the government back that this is our feelings about this, your policy. This is our feelings about this, your programs. This is what we expect you to do. This is what we expect you to do. And government has come forward with the uh, uh, nationwide pro uh, uh, broadcast of the president to say, this is what I have been doing. This is what I have done. This is what I will do. This is my hope for the country. Fair enough. You have said everything that you have been doing. You have said everything that you want to do. Now listen to what the people want you to do. It's a different thing for you to say, this is what I want to do for you. It's another thing for me to say, no, this is what I want you to do for me. So listen to what the people also want you to do. Marry the two. Government is supposed to have more information at their disposal than the ordinary person. So yes, they have more information than the ordinary people who are demonstrating. Many of the protesters don't even have, don't even have information. And listen to, I read somebody, some, so one of the uh, organizers yesterday was asking that they should come and do constitutional review. Can you do constitutional review in, in, one, in one day or two days? We were saying that everybody should be represented, all the 774 local governments should be represented. How can you do that? It shows you that they don't even have clear ideas, clear understanding of how things work. Be that as it may, they have expressed their grievances. It is now left for the government to sit down and say, what are the people saying? How can we marry it with what we are doing? I think that is the stage that we are in now. I think both the government and the protesters should give peace a chance. Government should not escalate issues with, with the threats of arrest, with threats of, uh, we will kill you, we will do this, we will do that. No. Uh, and the protesters should also not escalate issues by becoming, by allowing the protests to become more violent. There is an, a, a very, very critical introduction to this, uh, to this uh, protest that is amazing to people, that is astounding to people, which is waving of a foreign flag. That waving of a foreign flag in a Nigerian protest has a lot of meanings. For security people, it is a treasonable act. And it is, and when we look at what has happened around us, who in Mali, who in the Jay Republic, who in Burkina Faso, the entrance of Russia into these uh, West African countries, that's our neighbors. These West African countries quitting ECOWAS and forming their own organization. You can see that ne the Nigerian government cannot be expected to sit idly by and not take notice of that. I want to appeal to those who are doing that, if there are people doing that, because it is not all those 14 year olds that are waving those flags that we, that we can say are the sponsors of that. Maybe that is one of the things that this government is particular about, is looking as if the goal of the protesters is not just ending of bad governance, it is just, it is looking as if it is ending the present government. And no government will sit idly by and expect you to come and overthrow it. So I think we should actually stay within the, the confines of this protest, what they have told us they want to do to end bad governance, not to end the new government. I think we should make a difference between ending bad governance and not ending a particular government. Once we are able to do that, and government is, it knows that this, project, this process, well, protest is not to remove it from power, but to make it to do the right thing, and the protesters keep within that, I think it will be possible for dialogue and accommodation to, to, to be reached between the people who concerned. Okay, well, um, to cap it off, uh, after the speech of the president, just like you have said, the president said the things that he has done and the things that he intends to do, uh, but he should have listened to, the, to what the people were telling him that they want him to do. Um, if you were to advise the president right now, what are the low-hanging fruits that you would want him or you would expect him to do uh, to show the people that he actually listened to them? Yes, I gave this advice to a newspaper house that asked for my opinion yesterday. I said, if I were the government now, 
The two key areas that the people are focusing on is the devaluation of the Naira. And I said I was surprised that government even went that route at all to devalue the Naira the way it did. Because we had uh, we had the experience of SAP, Structural Adjustment Program yes. of, uh, of uh, military president Muhammad uh, of uh, Ibrahim Babangida. Babangida yes. And that was where the Naira began its slide. So you're a country that is not producing anything that is net importer. You cannot devalue the Naira. When you devalue your currency, what are you exporting? The commodity you are exporting, you are not even the one producing it. Crude oil, we are not the one producing crude oil. Foreign and uh, international oil corporations are the uh, companies are the one producing. So we don't have things we are producing that I will say that will become attractive. So what you do when you devalue your, your currency is that you increase your debt stock. The, the quantum of money that you need to, to pay your debt increases. And then you, you, you devalue the lifestyle, the living standard of your people. They now need more money, two, three, four, four times more to buy the exact commodities they were buying before, which is what we are experiencing now. So that devaluation of the currency, the quantum of the devaluation is amazing. And government has to do something about it. They have to find something to do about the devaluation of the Naira. And the Naira continues to slide. As at yesterday, it was over 1,600 to a dollar. How can you imagine that? How can businesses thrive? How can people survive? What, what, can, what can you buy? Because the Naira is becoming worthless. We must not wait until we get to the Venezuelan uh, or the Zimbabwe uh, crossroads before we begin to do something about that. Government must do something about this slide, the devaluation of the Naira. Secondly, I said government must do something about fuel subsidy. Yes, yes. We have removed subsidy, but we shouldn't have been done the way it was done. It shouldn't have been done in one fell swoop, and it shouldn't have been done without ad adequate planning. But now that we have done that, I okay. said that we should revisit it. Oh. Why am I saying we should revisit it? We should revisit it because the gains of that fuel subsidy is not percolating to the grassroots. Right. The people are not feeling it. Now okay. the governors are getting three, four times more than they were getting before. But we don't see the evidence. Where are they spending the money? So okay. all this money that they are giving to the government, to the governors now, they should use part of it to, to fuel, fuel subsidy. All right. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bola, for, for, your, for your thoughts there on the issue. We'd like to thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. This is where we'll have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've been talking to Mr. Bola Bolawole, uh, a veteran journalist and a public affairs analyst who joined us to talk about uh, uh, what the security agencies are saying, that they have placed some people on the watch list and as soon as they get or they set their foot on Nigeria, they are going to arrest them. Okay, uh, we've looked at all those issues. Right now, we'll just take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at another uh, aspect, which is suspending import duties taxes uh, by the federal government. Stay with us.